Well, we're here in Providence, Rhode Island, very happily, with Lainey Brown, who came along from Philly back to her old, old haunts. Happy to be Hi, here. Hi, Lainey. And Kate Colby has invited us to her lovely house. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for coming. We're here to talk about a poem by Rosemary Waldrop. It's called The Round World. And Lainey, will you read it? Sure. The Round World. Nature's inside, says Cezanne, and frightening. I do not like the fleshy echo. Even so, it is after this close proof Vision is made of matter, another mirror. It's possible, the eye knows, even where there should have been a lake. This optic, an illusion, look at the cat, his changing shapes, a habit, light, color, composition, the subject more than meets the situation, always looking at our own eye. Kate, let's start with the last stanza. There's a lot going on in there. First of all, the image of looking at our own eye, kind of hard to do. What, why, why that turning around self-referentiality? Well, it evinces and kind of wraps up um, the feedback loop of seeing and knowing that the whole poem uh, addresses and starts with, with the title, which, uh, you know, the whole, the whole piece to me is like an epistemological snow globe. Yeah. It, Mm. Well put. And, and she always does this, but here more than ever. The subject more than meets the, and then you're expecting the word I, which is a very important word implicitly in the poem. The subject more than meets the situation, always looking at her own eye. That word subject, Lainey, big word. Mm. Can you translate? I think there's many possibilities, but the first thing that comes to mind is vision as a motion and a kind of intricate series of actions as opposed to just something that happens unconsciously. Right, okay, so in, in the sense of um, the subject position or subjectivity is the place from which one sees. And of course, also since this is a collaboration with the, a visual artist, Jennifer McDonald, in a book called Peculiar Motions, published in 1990, subject is subject matter as well. Right. Well, and of Cezanne, too. And Cezanne. Like, can we connect back to Cezanne? What's the subject matter? Why I Cezanne? It, I read it as a still life. Or, I didn't read it that way. I imagined it that way. Mm -hmm. um, because of the fleshy echo of, I don't know, peaches or a skull or some component of a still life. Mm. Any other, Lainey, any other still life? Evidences of still life. Well, I'm just thinking about how the first line says nature's inside, says Cezanne. So even if the focal point is a still life, there's the interior of the body and the interior, you know, mechanisms of what happens in the eye and vision, which is simultaneously happening. So we're being pointed inward as well as outward as focal point. When I saw the title Round World and saw Cezanne in the first line, mm -hmm. I thought of the Cezanne-esque roundness for, in a still life, for instance, the incredible exaggerative roundness of fruit, for instance. Mm -hmm. but, but round is a big, round world is a big phrase here. Can each of you try it? Kate, what does round world mean to refer to? Um, it, I mean, to, in this poem, it feels to me like a, a borderline oppressive containment where the self is always trying to see outside of both itself and the world and grasping at something external that is inaccessible. Mm. Lainey? I really like that because I feel like it connects to um, Rosemary's probing into what is perception that's really in a lot of her work. Um, but I also am thinking about um, roundness in terms of the eye and the world as motion. You know, like the globe, the eye is always moving, right. the earth is moving, and then the kind of peristaltic movements inside the body when she's talking about what frightening, fleshy echo. Mm. There is this illusion we all have, and she refers to this optic and illusion, pun on optic, mm -hmm. on optic illusion, uh, of the terrestrial landscape being flat, like the base of uh, something you'd 
paint objects on that would be stable. Of course, Cezanne's great innovation was to take that tabletop and make it kind of not flat in a way. So there's a kind of terrestrial non-flatness. Mm -hmm. And also the round world strikes me as the eyeball in the right. Emersonian sense. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on, but we have to go for final thoughts. So, Lainey, something we haven't talked about this. Um, about I just this I love her line breaks in general. I think when she's using short line breaks as opposed to prose poems, there's always the gap in between what we imagine and then the next line that is so evocative in her work, mm. brilliantly used. Mm. Yes, Kate. I think this poem is so emblematic of her obsession. Um, with the self as mirror of the world mm -hmm. and creator of the world. Um, this, I mean, every one of her poems is that for me. They're mm -hmm. all um, quintessential. Fantastic. Nice. Thank you both. This was Thank great. You. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.